with the long awaited Mortal Kombat reboot upon us. I present, I look at the anime of Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge. Well, I look at this for a year, so let's open it up. Right off the vanity plate, see Scorpion grabbing Daffy Duck. Well, he can survive getting blown up, blown up by dynamite, so his fatality should not be a problem. Film opens on 17th century Japan with Hanzo Azashi with his son Satoshi. Probably a coincidence. As there's a scene with Scorpion fighting ants in the forest, Hanzo returns to his convent, which has been infiltrated by the Lenkwe clan and the head of his brother by Han, by known as Sub Zero. Right off this film, let you know that even though it's animated, it's not for kids. There was no time to stream up game after fatalities and special moves. The movie really likes the X ray special from the ninth game. The Lin Kuei kill Hondo's wife Harumi, then Sub Zero when you know, threatens to kill Satoshi if he doesn't submit to him. Hanzo will not yield. Sub Zero kills Satoshi by sort of shoving one of his trademark ice cold spears down Hanzo's throat. Wow. The opening 10 minutes definitely aren't messing around. We then see Liu Kang in meditation when he is ambushed by Raiden, signaling that's once again time for Mortal Kombat. We then cut to Johnny Cage, who is in between movie roles and love affairs as Home Malibu. I just love how they canalize his ego. One of the posters on his wall is from Ninja Mime. One of many ways this film kept as a source material. That film wasn't too big domestically, but naturally was a big hit in France and canon. Like usual, he initially thinks the movie role, but ends up taking it as a chance to prove who he's real. We are then introduced to Sonya Blade, who's in a fight with a gangster who is just in a cut with her training in the Special Forces under Jax Briggs. We cross all the ground in about the 80 minutes or so. And Sonya wins a fight when she pounds against his head in the pavement. This invitation determined to find Jax. Hmm. Back with Hanzo, he's trapped in another realm and has been tortured for centuries by the beast that's serving as Shinnok. No it's cliche, but why does this beast still have his palm to test his knife? Hanzo then bites off the beast's ear, Mike Tyson style, then cuts its head in two down the torso with one of his obvious bonds. He then uses one of his chains as he's holding as his trademark weapon, fights away the Quan Chi. Made a big British fan of his character in the games, I'll tell you more later. For now, I do kind of like how bemused he is a haunter, ruining his rug with the blood of his main enemies. That rug really tied the room together, did it not? She mm. then offers Hanzo a deal. He can return to Earth Realm for Mortal Kombat not only to take revenge on Sub Zero, but to steal a key from Lair Shang Soon. Hanzo agrees to get the mantle of Scorpion. Back on Earth, Johnny Cage makes a boat just in time with the others, and Liu Kang is fighting with the White Lotus Society. I always wonder what happened and after them after Iroh settled down. Raiden then reveals that Earth from an arc would survive by a veil covering disaster if it were threatened. So, not the most original plot, but it fits with the metaphors of art's influence the story, and it's in tune with the games as well. On that note, note this is in the point where Sean Conhan has long since been the main villain of the story, and Shane Soon is a faithful aid to him, I do like how this scene in the main hall has not a test your might mini game. Always was tricky for me to do when I was younger. Johnny Cage also takes dining on Art World Cuisine with the succubus quite well. Now they hasn't seen an LA near Smash Burger. Hmm. Shane soon declares Mortal Kombat in effect, and Scorpion starts searching for the key in the lower levels of the temple. The tournament leads off with a fight between Jax and Goro, which ends with Jax getting his arms ripped off. There's one of many ways he ends up getting his robotic limbs later. Elsewhere, Scorpion finds a key and Raiden warns her about Quan Chi and the path he's following. Kane enters space and he's enjoying himself as much as ever. When just the center of the temple, Shane soon spreads everyone taking part across the island. Jenna Cage's comments about the spread not go straight to video is kind of amusing, given the release pattern of the reboot and also WB Slate this year. Anyway, Johnny Cage fights with Baraka and really enjoying the energy as they clash in the dungeon. As he escapes the exploding dungeon, so we see Johnny Blade and he's a reptile. I don't know about using him in the reboot, but if it does well enough to get a sequel, I'm open. We've made lots of fans of CGI since 1995. I'm also open to see reptile portray costumes make up practical effects. Scorpion gives a follower of Sub Zero, and their clan's rivalry has been a key fixture of the background for ages. On the bridge, Liu Kang fights with Princess Katana. I find their banter quite amusing. With some continuities had them in a relationship, let's have something of an amicable rivalry, kind of like Batman and Catwoman. 
This is a ladder, especially given how Kitana concedes in Liu Kang. The Raiden cannot deathly engage in the tournament, he can't keep watch over his champions. Jack Hans finally realizes what's going down, points a partnership with Sonya Blade in more ways than one. Liu Kang joins them, and Sonya then knees Johnny in the groin. Still like him better than Scott Rudin. The mm. Earthrealm combatants meet Scorpion, and they all realize they have a common enemy in Shao Kahn and his followers. Raiden meets back up with everyone else, and they all come to the conclusion they must finish where they started back at the temple. Fighting through mercenaries on the island, who I initially thought were robots before they got their skulls pierced by Scorpion's sleeve spear, everyone re enters the temple and immediately pushes the finale. Scorpion fights Sub Zero as to find out the true killer is Quan Chi all along. Not quite as catchy twist as Agatha all along, but Scorpion is living when he finds out. Mm. Sonya then finds out where Jax is being held as Johnny Cage provides assistance against monsters while Sonya fights Kano. Liu Kang heads to the throne room when he faces off against Goro. Also, he's again voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson, the same one who voiced him in the original 1995 film. How about that? Quan Chi tries to poison Shang Tsung's challenge of spirits, but Shang Tsung doesn't fall for it. Has a Dread Pirate Roberts taught you nothing? How dare you spike his supply, Major Melvin? Jack bites Kano's hand as Sonya smashes Kano's laser eye with a hammer and Jack's curb stomps Kano. <clears throat> Shane soon imprisons Quan Chi, mocking lives his supposed in the Shinnok, and pledging his line to Shao Kahn. I love a hub where I get to say things like that. Scorpion then tears out Goro's skull and rejects Shang Tsung's offer of an alliance. Shang Tsung then says Scorpion can have Quan Chi if he finishes Liu Kang. Scorpion responds by sneaking behind Shang Tsung, continuing Liu Kang and ending the tournament. This frees Raiden to send Shang Tsung back to Shao Kahn. Everyone else oh, it's evacuates the island, leading Scorpion's final fight with Quan Chi. This last engagement is quite impressive, and even though it may not be the end of Quan Chi, he does have a good fight against all things considered, even after Scorpion breaks his nose. Scorpion uses his chain to tear off Quan Chi's arms, shouting, Get over here! as he pierces his chest and tears off his head. Shang Tsung's castle collapses in a massive explosion, and he closes on a stand of Shao Kahn being very displeased with Shang Tsung's failure. Sequel, please. Hmm. This is easily the best piece of Mortal Kombat animation I've seen, which, admittedly, given the quality of previous outings, it's really about to clear. I've never seen them, but they have been poorly regarded. It's not exactly the most sophisticated piece of animation you'll see, but the film is definitely spin off fans can appreciate in terms of adapting the games and as an animated film on its own. It cool features a lot of alumni from DC animation, both past and present, and the style suits the series remarkably well. If they made more, I would definitely watch them. Glad I can finally address this. Final rating is 3 and a half stars out of 4. Tomorrow will be my look at the long way of Mortal Kombat reboot, so be ready for it. Mm.